Right here, you are looking at 96 wonderful tanks dedicated to Caradina Shrimp. We have three rows, but we are not talking about Caradina Shrimp today. Today, we are talking about Dwarf Rayfit. These guys are absolutely stunning. One of my absolute favorites right now, and they have just been a lot of fun for me. So I wanna share some more information about these four species. So let's get right into the video. And what is going on at shrimp keepers, or should I say crayfish keepers? Cause today we are talking about four amazing dwarf crayfish species. One of the most popular is the orange Mexican crayfish. A lot of people call it the CPO. So you guys may or may not know about that, but we're gonna talk about a couple other types that you guys maybe never heard of. So all in all today, we're gonna talk about my four top favorites and the four that we have here at Philip Aquatics. And I'm gonna give you how to set up a tank form, the care form, a lot of information about them. So let's dive right into today's video. Today, we are talking about four different types of crayfish. The first one is the most popular, which is the CPO crayfish, otherwise known as the Mexican crayfish. The next one we're gonna be talking about is the Brazos crayfish. These guys are very similar to the orange CPO crayfish. They have a lot more wild types. So they're more or less the wild version. They're two different species, but it's the easiest way to kind of relate the two is that they are very similar, same size, same temperament. One is wild colors whereas one is orange the next one we're going to be talking about is the dwarf swamp crayfish now these are otherwise known as the pierre crayfish is what i call them and these guys are native to the united states so very cool species we'll be talking about these guys last but certainly not least is the least dwarf crayfish now these guys are also known as the blue mini crayfish these guys are the smallest crayfish they only get to about an inch in size and a my personal favorite so these are the ones we're going to talk about today but before we do let's talk about their setup right here is our basic setup for crayfish this is one of our breeding tanks this one houses the pierre crayfish uh there's a decent amount of babies in here i want to put a couple things out the first thing is this right here this is called a man filter um it's very similar to a sponge filter it's just air driven so we have air going in here and the air forces water up and over and then basically it pushes water through and then back over this whole thing right here is the filtration and this is called a madden filter it's very cheap it's a very effective filter but a sponge filter will work just as good now the next thing that i want to point out is this stuff this is called bright wall substrate so you'll see change substrate may of 2025 this substrate usually lasts about two years we tend to be careful we change it at 20 months this substrate can last way longer than that it's like little ground pieces of i, I don't even want to say little ground they're basically dirt that's cooked into really small pellets now, this stuff is really great for plants but it the big thing about it for us is it buffers the water so it actually holds the water at a really low ph about 6.4 on average and that's bright wall shrimp oil we use it in all of our caradina tanks and that's how we keep these guys you don't have to keep them that way they're actually very forgiving when it comes to parameters this is just how we keep them the next thing that we do is we use these these are three quarter inch pvc thin wall um basically what we do is if you can see it is we silicone these together we use rubber bands to hold it this gives the crayfish plenty of spaces to kind of like hang out you know when they're molting they tend to be a little bit aggressive we want plenty of places for these guys to hide we use three caves per tank you can see there's plenty of babies in here. So we have tons and tons of babies in here. You can see their favorite place to graze is on the mountain filter. That's why we love using it. It's just another place for microorganisms where they can feed. Now these guys just love these little caves. And so that's what we use. There's plenty of different options you can use. But this is how we keep our setup. Now, as far as water parameters go, these guys do prefer warmer water. So we keep these tanks at about 68 degrees. Um, I don't like seeing them get below 60 degrees just to be safe. Although some of these crayfish are from the United States, so they can go cooler than that. But like the Mexican crayfish prefer that 60 degrees or warmer. Now this isn't necessarily needed, but this is what we do. We use an RO filter. We make our own RO water. We bring it over here. We put it in the tote. So this has a TDS of zero. We then remineralize it with B shrimp mineral GH plus. You can use any GH remineralizer, but that's one that we use. Um, we're currently working on our own, so hopefully we'll have that out soon. But the one that we're using is our own. See, we actually have it right here, Flip Aquatics GH+. Plus. We remineralize in here. We get a TDS of 125 to 150, and, uh, and that's what we use. And so it actually says right here, our regular mixing instructions for 
the rest of our Caridina tanks. That's what these guys get. You don't have to get this specific. Um, most tap water is probably pretty good. Again, these guys are very forgiving when it comes to parameters. I just want to show you what we do. Before we get too far in the video, I did want to make a couple notes. First of all, crayfish are something in the United States that some states do not allow. So make sure to check your state, make sure you actually can keep crayfish where you go off and order them and get yourself in trouble. The next thing is crayfish have this bad rap of being very aggressive. Dwarf crayfish are actually extremely peaceful. So that makes them very great uh, additions to community tanks. Now, it, they are opportunistic. So like if they do have a chance to grab a fish, they might, although they are very peaceful. The most times that we see them be aggressive is when it's a male versus male during breeding. And so that's a time where you just need to be very careful of having plenty of eye blazes because you don't want two males beating each other up. So like I just said earlier is these guys are very forgiving when it comes to water parameters. Do not be intimidated by the fact that we use Brightwell substrate, GH remineralizer with RO water. These guys are actually really easy to keep and will adjust to most parameters. The biggest thing with them, especially the Mexican crayfish, um, you do not want their temperature getting below 60 degrees because they do like that warmer water. Um, they don't, it doesn't have to be like 80 degrees or anything like that, but anything above 60 degrees is good. And so that's another thing to just be careful for. And again, these guys are super peaceful. So I've actually seen people keep these with shrimp. They've done pretty good. Now every once in a while, they might get a hankering for a little, uh, you know, shrimp cocktail. But as long as you're not worried about that, um, you definitely could try it. So just a couple points before we got into the video any further, but I just want to make sure that you guys know. Now the orange Mexican crayfish is the most popular and you can see why they have amazing coloration they're very cool they're very active they stay pretty small so these guys only get about an inch and a half in size these guys are from mexico obviously because of the, the name gave it away dead giveaway as they would say but these guys are just super peaceful which make them great additions to most community tanks like i said the males will kind of get a little territorial especially when it's breeding but you can see this one it's a big girl chasing off a boy and these guys will actually hold their eggs on the bottom of their tail just like shrimp they're very similar to breeding shrimp pretty much exactly the same except for these guys tend to be much easier to keep and a lot more forgiving and just to make sure you guys are aware you do need boys and girls for this so there are self-cloning crayfish out there but these certainly are not one of them you do need a male and female so again they're very similar to shrimp in the way that they breed as far as their size goes these guys only get to about an inch and a half in size like this one right here is probably under an inch and then what we feed these guys is actually north fin bug pro we like feeding them a little bit meatier of a food and then we also want to feed them a big enough pellet they can run away and hide and not have to fight for the food you can see as far as aggression goes these boys are kind of getting feisty there might be a mold in the tank, some females uh, getting ready to breed, and they're just kind of trying to show their dominance. So again, they're not going to be super aggressive towards other animals, but they definitely will to themselves. Like, look at these guys just duking it out back there. Now, the Brazos crayfish is the next one we're going to talk about. Now, this one is also from Mexico. It is this pretty much the exact same thing as the CPO or the orange Mexican crayfish. The only difference is the color. This one has a lot more neutral tones, not as striking it does have some really cool blue colorations from time to time here's one that actually has more of the blue colors i mean they are really pretty super cool but more of a wild type um these ones would be fun to mess with the genetics kind of breed for certain colors do some selective breeding again you can see the dominant male over there kind of showing off his stuff uh he didn't want to be backed into the corner and uh, that one has a lot darker markings, but very similar to the Mexican crayfish. These guys definitely prefer the, the warmer water. I wanna show you what a buried female looks like too. There's one that's kind of made a little bit of a cave underneath the caves, and she's got a huge clutch of eggs back there. And so I thought that was pretty cool. And again, it shows you some different colors. She's buried herself. Uh, there's another pretty one next to it. Here's one up front that has you know, more neutral colors. Very cool dwarf crayfish, nonetheless. I saw this guy up front, and this is a question we get a lot, is do they regrow their claws? So this one only has one claw, and uh, yes, they do regrow their claws. It might take a couple months for them to get it back, but they definitely can get it back. I just couldn't help myself. There was no way I was gonna save these guys for last. These guys are the blue mini crayfish. They only get to about an inch in size. They have some absolutely phenomenal blue colorations in them. We're staring at one that just looks amazing. I wanted to show off this female too because she has a nice clutch of eggs. 
Again, super pretty blue. She just holds those eggs on her tail. She'll protect them with her life. So these guys are breeding pretty good for us. Again, overall, dwarf crayfish are not hard to breed. Um, you just want to give them plenty of places where they can hide. You don't want the females dropping eggs or anything like that. Always cool to see some pregnant ones getting ready to give birth. So really, really cool. The other really cool thing about these guys is they do originate from the United States. Um, so I believe from parts of Mississippi and Alabama is where they come from. That means that they can do a little bit cooler water temperatures, but again, if you stay around that 60 degrees, it's gonna be better off. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal dwarf crayfish. So the babies come out super small too. They come out as mini versions of the adults, just like shrimp. These guys are actually pretty close to the same size as shrimp, so you can expect pretty much the exact same things. You can see there's a bunch of little babies back there. These guys do breed really well for us. Always cool to see some breeding going on. The dwarf swamp crayfish, not to be confused with the dwarf swamp guppy, these guys are the Pierre crayfish, and these are also native to the United States. I believe they're from Illinois and Missouri. And so these guys could definitely take the cooler water temperatures. Now they do get a pretty cool blue coloration, very similar to the blue mini crayfish, like this guy right here. But a lot of people say they will not hold this color. So when they mold again, they might change to brown color. It might be tan, translucent. They say these guys fluctuate a lot with their color. Although I haven't really monitored it enough to know for sure. All I know is they definitely have some really fast name colors. Now the Pierre crayfish should always have lines running down their back, starting from their head, running down their tail. And they're either gonna be spotted like this guy or there'll be solid lines. And the lines can lines and spots can either be brown or black. So that way you can kind of know the difference, kind of know what you're looking at. Now the dwarf swamp crayfish definitely gets to about an inch and a half. Now this one is probably the biggest one that I've seen. Uh, with the claws, it might be pushing two inches. Hard to tell from here, um, but these guys are similar in size to the Mexican crayfish that we talked about earlier in the video. So if you're going for small, definitely go with the blue minis but if you're going for just beautiful color uh, these guys are a great option and just to give you another comparison of the size of the babies this is one right here and uh, they come out pretty small very similar to shrimp you can see again we have one burrowing underneath the little cave right there so pretty cool to see again some very cool blue colors they also get some reddish orange colors in here too now i know this is definitely going to be a question that i'm going to get is can you keep different species together and the answer is yes the only thing with keeping different species together is they will hybridize so you will get um different mixes which aren't necessarily good because it's really hard to tell them apart and so that's one thing that you have to watch out for when buying these guys is you can get hybridized ones uh, we import these from Indonesia. Uh, we have a pretty good source over there, so we trust them that they're not hybridizing them, but you never know until you start breeding that first batch out. So we have, we're in our second batch right now, and so far, so good. Now, earlier when I was talking about the lines, these are the lines I'm talking about, not the spots where they have the solid brown or black lines going down their back. You'll see this in the Pierre crayfish as well. Uh, this is the orange CPO Mexican crayfish. Now these guys, and this goes for all of the crayfish, they live for about two years on average. The smaller ones can live longer, um, but I'm, I guess all of them, you can probably get them to live about three to four years if you really took good care of them. But I would say on average, assume that they live about two years. That's what I got for you guys today. Don't forget to check with your local state to see if you're allowed to keep crayfish before ordering them online. You don't want to get yourself in trouble, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hopefully you learned something that you didn't before. I know me about two years ago, I didn't even know there was this many, this many types of dwarf crayfish. So I've been having a ton of fun breeding these guys and keeping them. I'm excited to keep them in my new fish room coming soon. So I hope you guys also enjoy this little video and hopefully you guys can get some dwarf crayfish in the near future and great addition for your community take. But you guys have a great rest of your week. As always, God bless. We'll catch you on the flip side.